So good afternoon, uh, Eddie Longo, sorry. So I thought that I'm going to take five minutes to just uh, talk to you about a piece of work that uh, many of us in Accenture has been actually working on for a couple of years. And I uh, hope that uh, you can actually come and join us uh, in this particular movement. So uh, what actually, just to get started, I just want to get a quick poll. How many of you are in the, uh, uh, the dinner on Wednesday? Wow, quite a good chunk, all right. Uh, how many of you is actually in uh, Paul's mayor uh, sessions uh, yesterday on the, the future of AI? Okay, smaller number. Do you see the commonalities between the two? What happened between the two sessions for those of you who actually attend both? At the end of the session, the question on ethics come out. And again, this morning, when we talk about future of AI, Ethics come out again. Why? And I like to actually sum it up with the Spider Man quote by Uncle Ben With great power comes great responsibility. That's actually what it's boiled down to. When we talk about powerful tool, that's what it's all about, right? Whether it's about CRISPR, DNA editing, whether it is about AI, that's actually sort of what, what actually we mean. And I'm quite sure that like many of you who actually sort of look at this space, there's a lot of activities already in SWAL, right? You actually sort of get to the highest level of government all the way down. University, you can go from IEEE to World Economic Forum to uh, 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 OACD in, in EU and so forth, and this as well, right? There are many of them. But if you actually sort of read any of those, it's actually sort of pretty thick, well, it's not like a reading Bible. At the end of the day, it's actually sort of very hard to decipher what should I do Monday morning. Yeah, we can actually talk about it like this morning on the, all the you know, philosophical aspect of uh, you know, what happened to singularity, what happened to actually sort of job, job displacement. But reality is that AI is already here. People are using it, specifically on machine learning. So are they going to wait until everything settled down before actually the ethics issues being addressed? The answer is no. So many of our clients are sort of coming to us saying that help us actually sort of decipher this. Now we're not going to try to, uh, you know, try to decipher all the pieces there, knowing full well that many of our clients are not the robotics maker, robots maker, and all actually sort of go to the you know, AI technology specifically. Many of them just, they're banks, they're insurance company, you know, uh, you know, the uh, manufacturing, retail, and so forth. They want to use AI technology. They want like, to be able to make their operation much more effective, much more efficient. But in the process, they also want to be able to address the ethical issue. Okay. So one of the things that, you know, we started this journey uh, a couple of years ago. We actually sort of start from a very much like a sort of a top down, like, you know, what actually really mean by actually have a, what we call responsible AI, right? We come up with very simple thing. We're going to try to boil the ocean, only four things, okay? One is transparency. I think it's actually John Madison actually sort of talked about it earlier. As, you know, it's basically we talk about transparency at a broad scale, right? So starting from where do you get this information? When you actually get a consent from your, your user, your customer, do they know exactly what kind of consent? So the informed consent. Right? Where is actually that, the, the, the data is actually going to be used? Look at it almost like a data supply chain, if you will, end to end, all the way to how actually that data is combined, reused, create a model, all the way to the application. So that's actually sort of one aspect of transparency. The other one, we actually sort of briefly mentioned around fairness. Right? Data is inherently biased. So let's actually not talk about like, okay, whether bias is actually sort of a bad thing. In fact, the, the reason why machine learning works is because the data has some biases in it. But we want like, to make sure that there is no uh, unintended biases like, sort of out there. Raise that up, right? To so make sure that it's like, sort of the decisions that you make. And then the other one is accountability. Somebody in the organization has to be like, sort of accountable for the work that they do as like, they deploy that. Not like sort of all the pieces when actually you try to distribute all the responsibility across, then you don't have like, sort of any one person like a responsible, and we're going to end up to the BMW questions later, later on, right? And then the other part is actually around agency, right? So around the people, this people are still very much center on the equation. The AI is about amplifying the efficiency, the effectiveness of a human, how to make that work. 
So under just four of those principles, I can sort of break it down to say, okay, what does it really mean? How do you operationalize it? Now, I'm going to not boil down everything, but basically we boil down to like sort of four dimensions. So you see four and four. So you know, one is actually at the organization and governance. It has to come top down. Eddie, you're doing an amazing job, and we have five minutes left. And I think we need to let David okay. so talk. So if you, want, if you want to hear more about the... Uh... All right. So basically, what I'm going to leave you to is like sort of four aspects of it. One is on organization and governance. The other one is culture and the people. The third one is on the process. And obviously, at the very the base layer that can enable all of this is the technology. Awesome. With that Thank is, you so much. Thank you.